Okay, um, so it's uh, it's Lenny and Blasey. Hi, <laughs> we're we're um, uh, gonna talk to you today. A little talk to each other too. A little bit about what it's like to learn Greek, ancient Greek. Um, and Blasey's much uh, closer to the process of doing it than I am. I learned Greek when I was, jeez, uh, eleven years old. Started learning Greek. Uh, I got that's a long time ago. I got, I got the white hairs to show for it. But we see much more recently. But um, <clears throat> I hope my voice. Yeah, I've got to make sure that I'm talking loud enough for you to hear. Mm -hmm. um, the, the the it's a difficult process relative to learning languages, uh, modern languages, or it's a different process. Let's not call it difficult. I think the main thing is um, that it's a different kind of experience. You're in for an adventure in learning ancient Greek, right? Yeah. Yep. I mean, you know, what were your expectations when you started? What, are, what were some of the things that happened when you when you began learning ancient mm -hmm. Greek? I had no idea what to expect. Right. I had never really learned a language formally. I had taken, like, a few classes in Spanish here and there, but... Uh -huh. You know, nothing that I really took too seriously. Right, right. <laughs> so I didn't. I had zero idea, um, and I learned a lot more than I bargained for with Greek. I mean, right. I learned just about grammar in general and how language works. And in a way, it's kind of interesting to not be able to speak it because you don't get tripped up in pronunciation and right. worrying about how you sound or right. like, um, you know, and you have a little bit of time to really think about it. And you know, it's a it's a little bit less scary when it's just on paper sometimes. And yeah, I mean. There are, there are these amazing uh, disadvantages to learning a language that you can't speak, because mm -hmm. that's how we actually learned our own languages, by speaking them, mm -hmm. right? And so, so you know, it's, it's a proven fact about the human brain that it can do that, okay? Mm -hmm. And anybody can do it. It's, it's somehow or other something that we are, we're able to do, manipulate these complicated systems of symbols. Mm -hmm. But, but um, when you... When you when you don't activate that stuff, it becomes a much more conscious process. It's an intellectual process, right? Mm -hmm, Instead of uh, a, you know an unconscious process. I mean, it's important to realize that when we speak, we don't think about the grammar of the sentences. We don't right. think about how to make the words, which ones to choose. It all happens in our unconscious mind in a very very seamless way. Mm -hmm. And so the whole unconscious process is something that when you learn Greek, you make in consciousness. So it's like, wow, that yeah. really. It really looks impressive, mm -hmm. and the important thing is not to get intimidated about it, because little Greek children could do it. <laughs> <laughs> so can you, <laughs> okay? But it's going to take longer this way, mm -hmm. because we do it in, in stages, right? Yeah, I think eventually, too, it helps you, like, understand your own language and any other language you may have learned yeah, up to yeah. this point. That's right. I mean, this class doesn't assume... You know, when I was a kid, uh, my parents called the school I went to grammar school because mm -hmm. that's what you learn. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and nowadays, people learn less and less grammar. And so we don't assume that you know anything, and we try to teach you everything that you know, which means learning things about the rules of your own language. Right. And um, so so that's always good to, to you become aware of things that you may not have known. And for those of you who know grammar, so much the better. But yeah. everybody's everybody's in the same boat in, a certain, in this class. We we try to get as close as we can to the experience that it's for you, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, we try we treat you all the same. So some of you may have had Latin, for example, right? Um, and that helps a lot because it's a another language that you don't, don't learn by speaking it. I mean, you can. There are people who actually teach people to speak Latin. Mm -hmm. There's a guy who's been doing it in Rome for years and years. Um, and you can do that, okay? <laughs> it, it isn't impossible, and it, but it's just an artificial thing um, for lots of reasons. I mean, we don't have any spoken Greek, right? Mm -hmm. we, all we have is written Greek, and we have poetry and oratory and, and platonic dialogues, but mm -hmm. it's very clear that they're very fancy kinds of language, and it's not what people said in everyday circumstances. Mm -hmm. So so there's that. Um the other, the other thing that's important to think about, um, uh, because it, we're going to take you through this experience, you're going to learn things about how the, the language works as a structure, how the language is a system. And, um, and you know, there, there are two parts to it. There's the understanding of, of, the, of the Greek language as a system, and then there's the fact that 
there's all this stuff to remember, right? Yeah. And when you learn a language by speaking, the memory, you don't have to memorize lists of vocabulary words when you're a year old. It just You just use them and you learn them. Mm-hmm. And um, when you're learning a language this way, you got to put some effort into remembering things. Most of us do. There are some people who are very fast at learning words and some people who are slower or who need help. And, and it's not because you're defective. There are all kinds of different learning styles in the world. So one of the things that we try to do in this way of teaching Greek is to adapt, be, uh, be able to adapt to different ways of learning and, and to help you. Uh, and we hope you all feel comfortable in asking questions, but also in realizing that uh, another way of learning you know, that happens a lot in languages, that you learn by making mistakes. When you are learning your own language, your parents have spent a lot of time correcting you. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons that I don't speak French as well as I do is because my wife gave up correcting me. <laughs> <laughs> it's so annoying to her, okay? But anyhow, I mean, that's part of what parents do in a natural way, okay? So we shouldn't be, you have to learn not to be afraid to make mistakes. That's, that's part of the learning process. And, and so we're going to correct you. The important thing is to try and learn from the mistakes, right? right. And, uh, and to see if you can not reproduce them. Um, um, what, are, what are some other tips that we can give people who are starting Greek? It's, it's, you know, because it's a slow process, it's, it's, going to take, it's going to seem like it's a more difficult language than it is. Right. right? You're going to learn it piece by piece. And, and here's the other here, you should answer that question. What are some of the other things? I mean, the, the biggest difference between English and, and Greek is the is is something significant, right? It's the fact that an English sentence, you, you know, the way the way we understand English, the rules of grammar that we are not aware of using um, in English are about the sequence of words in a sentence, mm-hmm. right? right. Um, and that's what determines their function. If you say this book is yellow, um, then it's a comprehensible sentence. If you say yellow, this is book, it doesn't mean anything, right? right? Mm-hmm. In Greek, the word order is is not the key to the understanding of the sentence. Um, it's an amazing idea, okay, mm-hmm. and a different way of making sentences. Um, there are things that tell you what a word order in English does tell you. Mm-hmm. There are little little suffixes, right? <laughs> little things that are added on to the ends of words. So there's a word a word for father, for example, is pater, mm-hmm. and that's when it's the subject of a sentence. So it, it would be like when father begins the sentence, that's that's the form that it have, would it have in an English sentence, okay? Uh, I, that's where it would be in an English sentence. But because it has a tag on it that says, this form is a subject, you can put it at the end of a sentence and a Greek person will understand that it's a subject. Right. Um, if it's the direct object, like in uh, father, uh, father knows, uh, a father knows his children, okay, the, the father is the subject of that sentence, the children is what's called the direct object. In Greek, father and children would have, one would have a tag saying it's the subject and another have a, have a tag saying it's the direct object. Mm-hmm. So you could put make the sentence "children knows father," and right. Greeks wouldn't get confused as to who knew what, right? Right, <laughs> um, because they're they're clear. But in English, it doesn't make any sense if you say "children knows father" <laughs> so, and, and stuff like that. You have to you have to make explicit the word order to, to have to have the right word order to make the sentence comprehensible. Right. So so this is uh, it's like it's like going to Japan, <laughs> okay. Or uh, some other country whose culture is as foreign as can be to you. I mean, if you're Japanese, it's like coming to the United States, mm-hmm. where people behave in different ways, right? Mm-hmm. And and uh, it's challenging, but it's also mind bending, right? Definitely. Uh, yeah. Definitely yeah. teaches you to think in, in new ways. I think. Yeah, and, yeah. And I think, and I think, you know, that's part of the. That's a huge part of the excitement for me in teaching Greek is mm-hmm. that. It's, um, it's, you know, learning about a culture that's different from ours. It's, it's not so much that it's older. It, that's not what really sticks out. It's how interesting it is the, the way that these people think and express themselves. Mm-hmm. So if you think about, for example, just what we're talking about here, 
If, you, if word order isn't what determines the basic meaning of a sentence, then why do you put certain words in certain places in a sentence, in a Greek sentence? Emphasis. Yeah. Means Emphasis, that. clarity. Mm -hmm. In poetry, it's a matter of aesthetics, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. so, and it's a resource that English is much more constrained that way, mm -hmm. right? So there are some amazing things that happen in that um, because of the way that this language is structured. Um, all right. Well, are there other things that we should tell these people? So, yeah, yeah, we were going to talk a little bit about there's the, the systematic part of language and there is the, the memorizing part of language, the memory part. Mm -hmm. And learning learning vocabulary, learning rules, learning, learn, starting out by learning, you know, things like the alphabet. Mm -hmm. These are, um, you know, things, when you learned the alphabet, you learned it probably by singing a song, right? Mm -hmm. You can make up a song for the Greek alphabet if you want. <laughs> like if, um, I, I, at my school, which was in Boston, we had a, the, the school cheer was Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Hamma, Roxbury, Hamma. <laughs> <laughs> they had a real Boston accent. But anyway, you can, both, you can remember Alpha, Beta, Gamma. <laughs> there are, those kinds of things are helpful in learning language. Things that you say are much easier than things that you read. And, and memorizing things that are written is a lot harder than memorizing things that you hear. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, there are, can you think of examples? Like, there are things that you don't want to memorize. Yeah, like, like songs or jingles or yeah, advertising things, commercials, yeah, commercials yeah. right? They, yeah. they, you never see them written, but they stick with you. Yeah, exactly. Right? So, uh, and uh, it can be hard to get them out of your head. So, the the comp the concept of singing is something very helpful when it comes to trying to understand the way language memory works. Mm -hmm. um, so, in any case, what we're trying, what we're saying is that here, these are little examples of how learning Greek teaches you to be conscious of processes and of and of uh, con of, of of constructs and of cultural and social things. Where, as we'll see that that we take for granted, but that are that are. It can be different in a different context, and so that's part of the the adventure is a, an adventure in in language and an adventure in how you learn. Okay, right. because you get to be be alert to the fact that you may not be learning the same way the person next to you right. is, and, and that's okay. That's where where we have a big tent here, and we want you to we want to help you and deal with your individuality as a learner. Okay, all right.